Hello, in this video, we're going to show you how to set up SDL Image Library and use it on a Mac. If you're on Windows using something like Coblox or Visual Studio, we are going to have separate videos covering the process for that. But the only difference is the actual setup. And if you've already watched our videos for setting up SDL, the actual process will feel very familiar. So you're more than welcome to go ahead and just check out this video and then adapt it for the code blocks and the Visual Studio version. If you want to check out that video, there will be a video to that as well. So this one, this video will be building on top of tutorial free, which loaded a image, a BMP image using the SDL underscore load BMP method. Problem with this method, it only loads BMP formats. If you want to load something like PNG, a TIFF or a JPEG, for example, very popular formats, you will need an external library. There's a whole heap of different ones. The recommended one for SDL is the SDL image library. And to install it on a Mac, just open up terminal, type in brew, install SDL2 underscore image, like so. And I already have it installed, as you can see, but if you don't, it will install it for you. It might take a bit of time, but just bear with it. And once you're all done with that, we just need to link it up to Xcode. So go to your Xcode project, go to build phases, click plus, click add other, command shift G, type in forward slash USR forward slash local forward slash seller, go to SDL2 underscore image, go to the version that you just installed, lib and then you will select this dy lib click open and you've included the library file now and we can just start including the sdl to image header file because that is part of the same folder that your sdl2 framework was installed to so just do hash include sdl2 or slash sdl underscore image dot h make sure that it is picking it up. I'm just gonna build it and just make sure it's successful. It is fantastic. First thing is we're gonna initialize the SDL image to for loading PNG images. So after we've loaded the window, we've checked if the window has successfully loaded, we are going to do if while this isn't true, so while IMG, so these are the methods from that library that we just installed. Well, img init is not true. Inside here, we're going to put img underscore init and we're going to initialize the PNG, but you can initialize the different formats as well. A PNG, and then you put and img init PNG. So while this isn't true then what we want to do is just do std c out could not initialize sdl underscore image and now it's going to print out the error like so we'll just put img underscore get error that's how you get the error then it's going to put a new line so std end line once you've done that, we can actually start using this library to load images. To load an image is extremely simple. We've already got the code to load a BMP into an image surface, and then we would check if the image surface has been created successfully. If it has, you would do blit surface, and then you would just apply the image surface to the window surface, and all of this still remains the same. The only difference that you have to do now, and also probably want to return one here, because you know something's gone wrong, you probably want to go out of it. The only difference is instead of SDL underscore load BMP, you just do IMG underscore load like so, and that's it. That's how you load a image. I'm gonna load an image called logo.png. It also supports loading BMP files, but don't really see the purpose, especially not of demonstrating this library for the purpose of just loading a BMP image. 
I've already got a logo.png where my main.cpp file is right here. And I've also got it with my product as well that gets built. So when I run this now, it's a logo of Sonar Systems. If I run this, we get the Sonar Systems logo. So it's that easy to use the SDL image library to load other formats other than BMPs. Like I said, there will be videos for the Visual Studio setup and for code blocks. If you have any questions, feel free to post them on our educational platform, sonarlearning.co.uk. There'll be a link in the description to that, along with a link to the GitHub page, which will have source code from every video in this series. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and leave us a comment. And as usual, thank you for watching and I hope you have a great day.